Hi, my name is Mike Ryan. The name of the show is Jury Duty, You Make a Difference on BNN Live. Hopefully the show that will answer all your questions about the one-day, one-trial jury system. Our special guest today is Chief Court Officer, Assistant Chief Court Officer, Henry Cadero at Suffolk Superior Court. Welcome, Henry. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you for being on the show. And Henry has spent his entire trial court career at Suffolk Superior Court and for many years has worked uh, in the jury pool. How many years have you worked in the jury, Henry? Well, to be honest, I started about 28 years in Suffolk Superior. About 15 years ago, I started doing the jury uh, pool. And about 10 years ago, I became in charge of the jury pool down there. Uh, prior to that, like I said, I was in the in the an entire uh, system for 28 years, just about. Now, how do you find, you find it challenging working in the largest jury pool in the state? It's quite a challenge, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Uh, having to deal with the judges, with the clerks, uh, sometimes with the court officers, uh, they always want to be first, and that's one of our biggest problems down there. In order to uh, pick a jury of 12 jurors, uh, they have an average of approximately 50 jurors in order to get a panel of 14, actually, because it's 12 delivering jurors and two alternates. However, we have a number of approximately 190 on a Monday, and when you have six or seven judges looking for 50, the numbers quite do not up. What we need to do is uh, send out some of the jurors, when they return, we put them right back into the system, and we send them out again. There are times in which one particular juror have gone up to three or four different trials. And when people come to Suffolk Superior Court, what kind of cases should they expect to sit on if they're picked for a jury? In Suffolk Superior Court, we have civil trials, we have criminal trials, we have uh, petty crimes, all the way up to first-degree murder trials. In the civil side of the court, we have trials that involve uh, uh, a small amount of money and other trials that involve billions of dollars. So the, what they need to do is try to get a, a jury of 14 individuals for that particular trial. So on average, at Suffolk Superior Court, you're dealing with anywhere from, what, about 150 to 200 jurors a day? Uh, on Monday, we start out on Monday, and we get about 190 jurors. Then gradually, uh, as the days go by, we have less jurors coming in. On Tuesday, we probably get 180, drops down like 10. Wednesday, somewhere in the vicinity of 170. And then uh, on Thursday and Friday, we have a target number of 100 jurors. So on Thursday and Friday, we probably get 100 jurors each day. The rest of the week, is, uh, the numbers are way up there. Now, what kind of, when people come in to s report for jury duty in Suffolk Superior, uh, do they ask you how long they should expect to be there? They always do. They think that they, they're going to be there for a couple of hours is what they really think. And that's the wrong, the that wrong idea? That is the wrong idea. That is the wrong understanding. Jury service is one day or one trial, which means if you get picked on a jury, you're there for the duration of the trial. Now, a trial can last, the average trial in Suffolk Superior is three days. So if you get an average trial, you'll be there for three days. You could also get a trial that lasts two weeks. A medical malpractice uh, is a case that typically lasts between a week and a half to two and a half weeks. Uh, if you get into a first degree murder trial, that's the same uh, type of issue. You're going to get a uh, first degree murder trial will probably last the same between a week and a half to two weeks. And then you get the, then the actual average is only a three day trial. So typically most people are done in one day. Most people are, in fact, done in one day. Uh, if we have five trials, so you figure five times 12 is 60, and another uh, is 72 jurors only. So if you have 190 jurors coming in, uh, you do the math. You, you're only going to be using out of that 190 jurors. There's only going to be like 72 lucky jurors that will get picked on uh, 
on the cases on that particular day. Now, if I go up into a courtroom and I'm not seated in the jury uh, box and I'm not selected, do I get to go home or...? You only get to go home at the end of the day or when I'm satisfied through the clerks of the session and sometimes I even have to contact the judges that there is no more need for you. Uh, at that time, we release you. Typically, in Suffolk Superior, the jurors will come in. They get sent out as early as 9 o'clock, sometimes a little bit later than that. They go up to a session. Uh, sometimes a uh, trial to pick a jury might last. It could last as little as uh, half an hour, as much as a couple of days or even longer. Uh, it really depends on the type of trial. And uh, all that is given to the jurors as they come up. The judge will explain to the jurors the estimated time that the trial expects to last, give some information, ask some questions of the jurors, and then if they find the jurors that uh, they're indifferent, they get seated. Once they begin, the process begins by which the attorneys can then challenge the jurors. Now, those challenges, the attorneys don't have to explain why they're challenging this particular juror, that particular juror. They just have to keep it to whatever the number is given to them. So they shouldn't take it personally if they get challenged? Absolutely and... not. They could be for any reason, that, and they don't have to give you a reason why they're challenging. The attorney's trying to pick the best jury possible for their cause, and that's what they do. So does the, uh, the, the lawyer for the state does the same thing. So people, when they come to Suffolk Superior Court, they shouldn't expect to be out at noontime or 2 o'clock, but a typical, what's the court day last? A uh, typical day in a typical jury trial is uh, really from, uh, we start signing in jurors, checking in jurors at uh, 7.30. By 9.30, uh, we've already finished the checking in of the jurors. At that time, we give the jurors uh, a brief explanation as to what to expect for the day. We have the judge come down and talk to them. I'll give them a brief explanation as to what to expect. And then uh, the judge comes down and talks to them. We show them an 18-minute video, and the video also explains to them uh, what takes place in the, in the jury system. So they're pretty well informed by, uh, let's say, by the quarter past nine. They're pretty well informed as to what to expect during that day. What can, uh, that movie, uh, the jury movie, can I get it on uh, Netflix or Redbox? <laughs> so they have to see a judge and they have to watch the movie. They have that's, to watch the movie. That's part, of the, that's part of their and orientation. And they have to be orientated, yeah. That is part of their orientation. Before someone comes to court for jury duty, is there anything that jurors should do in preparation of reporting? When they... Uh, the jurors are summoned to jury duty about three months ahead of time. So it's given ample time for them to uh, check the calendar as to whether or not they, uh, that day is okay. If it's not okay, they can go on the website. They can change the day. They can call the jury commissioner's office, the 1-800-THE-JURY. They can change it that way. And even uh, at time, if they come to our place and they have a reasonable uh, reason, they have tickets for the next day to go someplace else, we will you know, give them another day to come back. So the jurors really do have ample time to make all those decisions before coming uh, on the particular day that they're summons. Do they have to fill anything out to bring to court? Uh, they do. When they, when they come into jury, let's see if I can find it right now. I do have it here. It's a jury questionnaire that is given to them. And they have to bring it with them to court. They have to bring it to, uh, with them to court, and we advise them to have it completely filled out. And if they don't have one, <clears throat> can if they, they... If they don't have one, we have plenty of them, copies for them to fill out. We expect that there is a, uh, a percentage of the jurors that come into the jury duty that they will not have the jury questionnaire completely filled out, although we try to uh, tell them when, when we put it on the recording that we have, we tell them that it's best for them to have that questionnaire completely filled out, but we have a section in the jury pool where they can go and fill out the questionnaire. Now, we just came off a, a terrible winter. Now, if 
there was bad weather, is there a place I can, is there a phone number that I can call to find out whether or not I have to report? There is. The system is set up right now where the same number that you called in to find out whether or not you need to report for jurors, it is the same number that we early in the morning, uh, by 6.30, I put in a message and told them that due to the weather conditions, the jurors have been canceled. Was this an unusual winter that you had a lot of cancellations? Absolutely. We have six or seven cancellations this year that normally in Suffolk Superior, if we have one during the whole year, it's a lot. Now, if I'm called to Suffolk Superior, how should I get to the courthouse? Your best bet is to use public transportation. And the reason for that is that if you come in, there is no parking. So you're going to have to pay for parking. Now, the parking rates in Suffolk Superior is like close to $50. If you try to use the meters, you might not have time to go out there and, and feed the meters. Mm -hmm. So which means is that if you put in 2 or $3 into the meters and you don't have time, you can go back there and find yourself with a ticket. And depends where you park, you can also find yourself that the car has been towed. So the best bet for you to do is to take public transportation. Suffolk County is unique. We have, if you live in, uh, in West Roxbury out there, you can get there through the, I believe it's the uh, red line, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, orange line. The orange line, that's correct, I'm sorry. If you live in Revere or Winthrop, you can use the blue line. So there is public transportation accessible uh, so you can make it to, uh, to Suffolk Superior. Now, when I come to jury duty, um, how, how should I dress? Do I, do I need to wear a tie or do I have to wear f something formal? <clears throat> no. You don't need to wear anything formal. However, we would like to see the jurors coming into the jury, uh, what we call properly dress. dress. Casual. Uh, we don't want to see any tan tops. We don't want to see any any T-shirts with names or anything on on them. But at the same token, I personally don't want to see you coming in with a shirt and tie if that's not you. Mm -hmm. I want you to be you at least on the first day. Uh, by that I mean that if you're used to just wearing just a sports coat or anything like that, that's fine. If you just want to wear a shirt, that's fine. The only thing we don't want you to wear is, like I said, is tan tops and, uh, and shorts. Really, you're not going to the beach. You're really going to up to uh, your service for jury. Now, we have judges told jurors to go home because they were inappropriately dressed? Absolutely. They have. They have in the past. And I, personally myself, I have done it when it's brought to my attention. I have one without going into... Uh, Specifics, I have one particular person that came in with an, an appropriate statement on a, on a T-shirt. When it was brought to me, she had a coat at the time, so I didn't see it. If I had seen that, I would have never checked her in. However, it was brought to my attention. When it was brought to my attention, I brought it into the office, and I work out another day for her to come back. Okay, so there have been people who, would you say business casual is probably the style that they should use? Absolutely, yes, that is correct. And if, when I come to jury duty, uh, can I, what can I bring? Well, if you come to Suffolk Superior, I can only really speak for Suffolk Superior because there are other courts that don't allow it. Sure. Okay. Can, I, can I bring this? Yes, you can. You can bring that. You can bring a laptop. You can bring, a, uh, you can bring food if you like, if you want to bring something. As long as it's not in glass, uh, anything that's glass. It's the only thing that you will not be allowed to bring. Really? Something that's made of glass? Made of glass. If you bring, no, that, that we don't allow. Plastic, that's fine. If you bring a tonic bottle made out of plastic, that, water bottles, that's it's okay. However, if we bring something, we have people that bring something in, in glass bottles. What happens is the blue shirts out front, they take it, they won't let them bring it in. Okay, so juries are different than some of the regulars who may come to court for either being a witness or somebody who's a defendant, where they, most people can't bring in cell phones, but jurors can? Uh, the jurors are allowed. Since we work in the largest uh, uh, jury pool, and we can have, when you come to jury, we just don't summons. We summons everybody. So if you're a doctor, if you're a t 
teacher, if you're uh, uh, a plumber, carpenter, anything, you can, you'll be summoned for jury duty. You can be a doctor, and you'll be summoned for jury duty. There is no exemptions uh, from jury duty. And you work with a wide range of people from all walks of life, all sorts of ages, that you uh, deal with college students, do you not? Yes, I do, yes. And do college students who come from out of state, do they have to do jury duty in Suffolk? Absolutely. You have to, if you come, to, if you're uh, in school here in Boston, whatever county you live in, you must serve as a juror. As long as you're here for over 50% of the time, then you're eligible to serve. So you get a lot of and, college kids from like BU and Northeastern and... Uh, we get about 25% of the jurors that come into our place our are college? students. They're students. college students. And often enough, they come up to the counter and they say to me, I'm a student. I don't live in Suffolk County. I, then I have to say to them, if you look out there, you'll see about 25% of the people that are here, there are students also. They have the same issue that you have, and you'll have a chance to explain those issues to the court. I cannot excuse you from jury, jury duty. The only one that can do that is the court. So even college students, when they report for jury duty, even if they're from out of state, they'll have an opportunity to speak with the judge? Absolutely. Yes, and only, so. the, only the judge can make them stay or modify the terms of their service? That is correct. The judge is the only one that can do that. Now, do you have any advice for first-time jurors? Just to uh, read the literature that is given to you. Read a little bit about it. About it. Find out when you need your summons three months ahead of time. If you read a little bit of that, it will give you uh, some idea as to what to expect when you come into jury duty. Do you have a favorite jury story from all your years in the jury pool? Actually, I do, and it's not only a favorite uh, jury duty, but this here one, what happened here was a life-saving story, which mm -hmm. always remains with me. About three to about five months ago, I believe it was about five months ago, I'm getting ready to dismiss the jurors. I go up to the podium, and I begin by saying, as I always do, good afternoon, jurors. I, didn't get, I don't believe that I even got good afternoon, jurors, out of my mouth. When I hear from the center of the call 911, call 911, I ran out. I went into the office. My boss happened to be sitting in, the, in one of my chairs there, and I said to him, call 911. I started going out to where the commotion was. When I started moving towards the uh, commotion, I hear somebody says to me, take the defibrillator. So I grabbed the defibrillator and went right out there. As, when I approached, I saw an, uh, a gentleman being helped. Actually, they were being doing chest compressions. They were doing chest compressions on the gentleman, and the e, there was an EMT there. Who was a juror? There was a juror, yes. Uh, there was a doctor. Who was a juror? Who was a juror. And there was a nurse's aide that was a juror. So when we got there, I helped out a little bit, what I can do, uh, but they had the situation under control. They actually brought this gentleman back to life. And he survived. He, he did survive. He, they, we put the, they put the defibrillator on him, and the defibrillator says shock, which means that they had to be brought back. Uh, the EMTs got there, put him on the stretcher. As they were taking him out, they had to continue to do chest compressions. The gentleman is okay. Uh, we checked, and he was okay a few days later. He doesn't remember anything that wow. happened. However, I can tell you this, that if I had let those jurors go 10 minutes earlier, and I could have, that day I could have, I don't know what got into me that I said, I'll, do, I'll wait another 10 minutes or so. And then finally, when I did this happen, if I had let them go, you can imagine, he would have been 10 minutes away from the courthouse. Wow. With, and God knows what would have had happened at that time. So it was <clears throat> just shows you the diversity of the jury pool that you had trained medical personnel there to assist you, plus you had the defibrillator oh, yeah. in the jury pool. The defibrillator paid for itself on that particular day, I can tell you that much. Now, have you had many famous jurors come to your court? I believe that everybody that walks through those doors is famous. Okay, okay. That's, that's my belief. That's, I don't have any particular uh, 
person per se that is uh, famous. I can tell you that uh, if you want it, John Kerry came in one time. Okay, so Secretary of State, the Secretary John of Kerry. State was here, was there about, actually he's probably due to come back not by now, <laughs> about three yep, years. He'll be thrilled to get his jury oh, summons, yeah. right? <laughs> he was there. What's the longest jury trial that you can recall that uh, you've worked on? Well, I particularly didn't work on this year, but I can tell you the longest jury trial that I remember was about uh, about seven or eight years ago. I don't know if you remember Judge Sokara, you, you remember him? Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's one of our judges. He moved over to the appeals court uh, about three, two or three years ago. He had a case. It was a civil case. It took him about uh, a couple of weeks to get a jury. And that particular case lasted two and a half months. So you had a long impanelment a long followed impanelment, by a long uh, uh, jury uh, yes. trial. Wow, that's unbelievable. Now, in your experience, every day you're given a list of all the prospective cases that may go to trial, correct? That is correct, yes. Do you find that a lot of cases resolve before going to a jury? I would say that approximately 85% of the cases in the system end up uh, settling before trial. Often what happens is that uh, we overbook, if I'm permitted to use <laughs> yeah. that, that statement. The clerks overbook. They might have three or four cases on the day. And what happens is that as the day goes by, this, this year one settles, that one settles. And there are times in which I have jurors and not cases to send them to. But the only reason why that happens is that during the... Uh, as the day goes by, the attorneys know that there are jurors down there. They know. And when there are times in which they say to the judge, judge, if we can, can we have another five minutes? Can we have ten minutes? And the judge will be more than happy to give them the five or ten minutes. And uh, ten minutes later, fifteen minutes later, or whenever, they come back and say, Your Honor, I think we've reached a conclusion. I think we're able to settle this case. So that case is taken off this off the system. It happens all the time. At times it happens as the jurors are coming into the courtroom when the case the attorney says, You 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 honor, can we approach Cybar? They go to Cybar says, I think we have a resolution to this case. Now, those jurors, what happened to those jurors, they stay in that particular case until the resolution is completed and until the judge accepts the terms and conditions of that particular one. Henry, have you found in your experience that a lot of people who come into jury duty might be a little cynical, they may not be too happy about doing jury duty, but you found that after they've served as a jury, you found that it became a positive experience? The judges have, uh, after the, the jury trial is completed and after the jury's rendered their verdict and everything else, the judges usually go back and talk to the jurors. And usually when, I'm, when I used to be up, up there and doing that type of uh, work, I used to go in there with the judges. And the judges will tell you themselves that the jurors might be reluctant to come in. But once they serve, once they finish their work, they come back with a positive attitude. I get it all the time. They come back and says, I was here. I was here in such and such a case. And they, you know, sometimes they, they come back and they talk and they said there was a good, good experience. Well, we've run out of time. We'd like to thank you for tuning in today to Jury Duty, you Make a Difference on BNN Live. Just remember, if you have any questions regarding your jury duty, you can always call the Office of Jury Commissioner at 1-800-543-5879. Thank you, Henry. Thank you at home. Thank you.